Compared to a lot of what we cover in this course, the material of this section is rather abstract. Still, it shouldn't be ignored entirely. We've said several times that if we use a function to create a Taylor series, there's no guarantee that the function will equal its Taylor series. And that begs the question, when will a function equal? its Taylor series. Here is part of Taylor's theorem. I'll write the remainder of it in a minute. Suppose we have an infinitely differentiable function on an interval, and A is, the in is a point in the interval. And we create a Taylor series centered at A. The question at hand is as follows. On the interval, will this function equal the Taylor series? And rather than immediately look at this infinite series, we're going to start by looking at the finite degree Taylor polynomials. And we state part of Taylor's theorem. For any natural number n, this function equals the nth order Taylor polynomial plus something else. We call it R sub n, the R stands for remainder. And this remainder has a certain form. And in fact, this remainder looks a lot like a Taylor coefficient. You see the n plus first derivative matching the n plus first factorial, matching the n plus first power. That's precisely what you see with these Taylor coefficients. The only difference is that instead of having A, the center of the Taylor series, we have some other number C. And C depends on X. C is between A and X. Let's rewrite this to be less messy. We have called our Taylor polynomials P sub N. So what I'm saying is that f of x equals p sub n plus r sub n, where p sub n is the Taylor polynomial, and r sub n is this thing here, this remainder term. And now let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of both sides 
of this quality. On the left-hand side, there aren't any ends. So taking the limit as n approaches infinity doesn't do anything. We still have f of x. On the right-hand side, the Taylor polynomials are the partial sums of the Taylor series. And the limit as n goes to infinity of a partial sum is a series. So as n goes to infinity, this turns into this. And now we have the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n of x. Ergo, we can make the statement that f of x equals its Taylor series if and only if this goes away. If and only if the limit as n approaches infinity of r sub n equals zero. And let's end this video here. But of course, we'll discuss this in depth and give examples and stuff in later videos.